on this episode of Travel Log. Come and explore Zhenjiang City, which used to guard the mighty Yangtze in Jiangsu Province. Be enthralled by the ancient history of the scary fort, and visit the UNESCO Heritage Local Residence with the charming southern Chinese architecture. It's all happening here on Travel Log. Welcome to Travelog's Jiangsu series. I'm Greta Georges. We're here in Zhenjiang, where the Grand Canal and the Yangtze intersect each other. Now, Zhenjiang means garrison of the sea, and it used to guard the mighty Yangtze. Sitting on the southern bank of the Yangtze River, Zhenjiang, a city in Jiangsu Province, has its prosperity linked to the construction of the Grand Canal. Zhenjiang borders Nanjing on the west and Shanghai on the east, and its port is a convenient stopover for cargo and passenger transportation. This dynamic city even boasts of mountains that add depth to its already rich landscape, while the surrounding waters are a blessing to its economic fortunes. To better understand this city, the best place to start is Xijing Ancient Ferry Port. Xijing Ancient Ferry Port is strategic and important here in Zhenjiang. The river Yangtze is over there. It's about 100 meters back, and it retreated due to soil deposits. Now we're really lucky because here is actual archaeological evidence that the port used to be right at this spot, and you can imagine the flow of traffic, people, goods, and they will enter Zhenjiang via this point. Xijing through Ancient Street might only be one kilometer long, but its history dates back to 1,800 years ago. And it flourished in the Tang and Song dynasties. Since Zhenjiang's port was located here, seafarers coming from both ends of the Yangtze would dock at this lively stopover point. I could only imagine life in the ancient times was abuzz with trading activities. If you look here, there's a platform, and workers used to push their carts up on a single wheel, creating this indentation on the path. It just goes to show how it's just been weared and teared throughout the centuries of use. There are clues everywhere of Zhenjiang's once colorful past. Xi Jingdu had witnessed many battles, and its stage was also a set where seamen anticipated the rough journey ahead. Naturally, one of the most pressing issues back in the days was safety. The Yangtze River is like a frontier, so naturally it's dangerous for a seaman to head out and to make that dangerous voyage. Who's going to pray for them? Well, locals thought of a brilliant idea. They built a pagoda right up there. Now, it's unusual for a pagoda to be on top of a bridge between two streets, but every time they walk underneath, it's like they're praying to the heavens for a safe passageway. The seas were rough and treacherous, so it was wise to seek a bit of protection. Locals turned to Guan Yin for spiritual help. Guan Yin is a popular goddess in Chinese folk belief, worship for her unconditional love and compassion. Here in Zhenjiang, locals regard the goddess of mercy as the ultimate protector of fishermen, sailors, and anyone out at sea. This cave is as old as the port, and all the Guan Yin statues here has been donated by the local residents. Although the Yangtze is now situated further away from this old port, Guan Yin still sits firmly in her spot. Xi Jingdu might not be the thriving busy port, but you can imagine what it looked like during its heydays. This quaint street still features a traditional type of wafer from the past. We stumbled into a family-run business and the man who's carrying the torch for Xi Jingdu. Hi, 
，小码头街的嘛，就是很繁华的地段嘛。市中心的嘛，城市的市中心点就在我们这里。这饼好吃吗？好吃。好吃。嗯。可以吃一个吗？可以吃一个。哦。你吃了。好，谢谢。嗯。Really crispy and very good. 走了，再见。Xijing Du's historical presence gives you a glimpse of Zhenjiang's once glorious past without the stuffiness of a museum. Meeting the local people here has given this place a distinct character that is truly memorable. And what I'm going to sample next will also be deeply edged in my mind. It is essential to try seafood here because we're right next to the Yangtze River. Expect great variety of fish, crustaceans. Why? Because we're in this part of China and it's a yummy, delicious opportunity. The Yangtze is the longest river in China and it abounds with freshwater fish. But the piece de resistance here does not come cheap at 400 RMB a pop. So the best time to chomp on it is in April. There's a delicacy here in China, and if you ingest it along with its poison, this is what happens. First, there'll be a deadening of the tongue and the lips. Secondly, you'll feel numbness, lightheaded, dizzy, and start to vomit. Then you'll have rapid heart rate increasing, decreased blood pressure, and you have muscle paralysis. Now death follows by suffocation because your lungs will fail. This delicacy can kill about 12 elephants and wipe out a human in 10 minutes. It's none other than the pufferfish. These chefs have a unique and important responsibility. To ensure this delicacy is safe for consumption, it's crucial to detoxify the liver. It seems like the novelty here is eating a fish that could be potentially fatal. And it was hard to shy away from the challenge, but I still needed a little coaxing from me. Even though I can pull a puffer fish face, I'm still deliberating whether I should eat it. All right, tails, not. Heads, yes. To eat or not to eat. All right. Oh, 你好，师傅，你好，你好。哇，真的好漂亮。可是师傅，我知道河豚你是带有毒的，对吗？是。会。但你有执照吗？有。有啊。<laughs> I think I'm going to try and get him to try it first. Uh, 师傅，嗯，要不你先请吧。可以。师傅，你坐这儿有多久了？二十一年。二十一年了。那师傅，我相信你有很长的经验。OK， 我一定要试一下。All right。嗯，我真的好吃。我。If you don't see me in the next episode, you know what happened. But this is pretty good. Hmm, really good. You cooked it well. Hmm. 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 Come and explore Zhenjiang City, which used to guard the mighty Yangtze in Jiangsu province. Be enthralled by the ancient history of the fairy port, and visit a UNESCO heritage local residence with a charming southern Chinese architecture. It's all happening here on Travel Law. We're going to be visiting a UNESCO heritage site today, but what's really interesting, it's actually a private residence of the Zhang family. We're going to meet the owner. Oh. Hi, Ni Hao. This family of Chinese medical doctors has their roots firmly planted in this Zhenjiang courtyard residence. For over 100 years, they bore witness to all neighbors leaving and the dramatic changes to their environment. This is not your traditional run-of-the-mill tourist spot, as the Zhang family still live here. But they don't shy away from the occasional knock on the door. Why? 
从心情上也可以压抑，压抑以后呢，不要心匆匆朝里跑。你看他这个先给你停一下，欣赏这个透窗。我这个房子呢，是从这这边呢就要走走回廊了，走回廊，所以没有什么事情呢，那个门呢不怎么开，就从这走。这个你看这个门。好这个门是叫叫什么叫腰门啊？这个腰门就跟腰一样的宽，哎，叫你叫你走。你看我们俩走走走不过来，走不过来，哎，走不过来，对，不要一个人走过来，哎，走不过来。You can't. You have to take the time, pause, and appreciate everything here. Just slows you down. Things come in small packages. Southern Chinese open courtyards are more petite than those found in the north, but they too pack a punch. All in all, this architectural relic has won over my heart as the Jiangs fought tooth and nail to keep everything intact. And what's still intact here is the bizarre cooking. Their version of the humble noodles might leave you scratching your head for good reason. Shenzhen's culture is a mix of northern and southern customs, language, and eating habits. And that includes noodles for breakfast. But the major selling point is that they cook the pot cover along with the noodles. Shenzhen's unique position as a transitional point has its benefits. Besides promoting and facilitating the flow of goods and people, eating habits are exchanged too. What's even more surprising is that the chef has to jump with this massive dough to knead it out, and that is probably the secret to its unique texture. Noodles might be a staple from the north, but Zhenjiang has transformed it into its own speciality here in the south. 哎，老板娘，为什么你要把锅盖放进去呢？锅盖它就面条盖几下，压盖几下，四面透气啊，面条煮不烂啊。那、嗯、然后它这个锅盖会不会影响到它的味儿呢？不会。哦，是吗？然后煮出来的就是一团。对，一团一团的，它不会散开啊。I see. Okay, so there's a reason why they put the cover in because at first it, it's um, a wooden pot cover and so it's fruity. It, it gives it a good like a aroma, and it also helps for them to know when it's boiled and it keeps the noodles in one pile. Mm. In the olden days, port workers needed a cover overload to get on with the arduous task with loading their goods. Their version of a fast food provided a kickstart to the day, which has become a timeless favorite. Now, Zhenjiang people might have a passion for their noodles, but they also share a similar zest for this other locally produced product. Whoo! Well, I guess if you're in Zhenjiang, there's only one thing to do, and that's to visit a vinegar museum. Ooh. I'm salivating now. This is a funky smell. I like the way they've built this place. It's a traditional warehouse, just like the, how they would make vinegar in the past. You know, awesome. This vinegar museum has a factory just behind it, churning out bottles of vinegar that has overpowered the area with its strong smell. Here, an old showroom has been constructed according to the brewing vinegar workshop of the 1920s. So visitors can get a sense of how the entire process works.
。这个地方呢，就是我们做醋配的一道工序，把已经成熟的酒呢放到这个缸里面，然后呢半露麸皮和倒缸，看我们这个老师傅呢就是在这边翻飞。这个呢就是我们的醋配，可以闻一下这个味道。It's strong， 师傅，你这每天要搅吗？每天一次。每天一次，那要多长时间呢？二十一天。Locals say working in this environment naturally guards them against the common cold, and they even boldly claim that none of their workers ever had cancer. This is a mystery that I certainly cannot wrap my head around, though I might take it with a pinch of salt. There is certainly more to vinegar than its tangy taste. It has also many vitamins and mineral salts, and for thousands of years, it's been valued for its healing properties. From the pocket fairies to the chef's pot, this healthy seasoning can play a healing part in our lives. Bring water to boil for 10 minutes, mix in with a little vinegar, sprinkle some spring onion, drink the concoction, and that should alleviate you from your flu. Reducing inflammation from mosquito bites. Vinegar has lots of remedies that you can use. Blood pressure, stinky feet. No more smelly armpits. If you're looking for that perfect Christmas gift, well, look no further because you can put your very own face on a vinegar bottle. Here goes my best smile. Personalize your own stylish or goofy bottle of black magic, known throughout China. Your unique bottle of vinegar will cause a stir, as friends and families will definitely find it loads of fun. At 30 RMB, it's well worth the money. In Chinese, 吃醋 means to have vinegar, and it also has a double meaning that you're jealous of someone because it leaves that sour feeling in your heart. So if you've got any haters out there who's jealous of you, you can send them this. Zhenjiang has a wealth of hills in its own backyard, and interestingly enough, most are stamped with their own religion. Jiao Shan, Bei Gu Shan, and Jing Shan are the trios that share this unique feature. Since Jing Shan is infused with Buddhism as well as other mythical tales, this is a visitor's favorite. So we decided to head up there. Zhenjiang's position as an ancient busy port has really encouraged the spread of beliefs and.、Uh, They say if you stroke on this baby and you touch yourself wherever it hurts, it helps to alleviate the pain. My spot. Back is killing me. Founded in Eastern Jin Dynasty for 1,600 years, Buddhism flourished in Jingshan Temple. But it earned its fame through its unique water ceremonial procession. Water has a special place in many religious practices, as it cleanses spiritually and physically to prepare the person to enter a place of worship. Many believers pay to have this procession done for good luck and prosperity in their daily affairs. Besides experiencing this spiritual event, Jingshan is also the backdrop to an epic mythical love story. An Eastern version of Romeo and Juliet, Madame White Snake, takes a leaf from the inspirational surroundings here. This story is so popular that it has been adapted into television series, 
opera dramas, and books. Now the story goes like this. Madame White Snake fell in love with a mere mortal, and that was against the laws of heaven. So a monk cast him away, her love, in this place, and she used the river around the area to flood the temple to save him. It seems to me that the legend has its roots here precisely because of its unique geographical location. Surrounded by water, you can climb on top of Tsushou Pagoda for a bird's eye view. To catch a glimpse of such a gorgeous scene right in the middle of the city is a pleasant surprise. The picturesque view on the outskirts of Chenjiang did not fail to impress either. Maoshan is another spiritual sanctuary just one and a half hours ride from the city center. Taoism has given Maoshan much of its character and they say that fortune telling is pretty accurate here. Now hordes of tourists come and pay their respects to the revered Taoist sage. How can they not? This is the world's largest bronze statue of Laozi sitting on a mountain. Due to its rich history, Maoshan Taoist Temple is a storehouse of lots of valuable cultural relics. Taoist believers consider this sacred space in Maoshan as the first holy land. The feng shui here is considered to be extremely, well, lucky. So besides the hordes of tourists, pilgrims flock here too for their showers of blessings. Alright, so they say if you throw a coin in and you get it into the tower, it's great blessings. One more time. Score! <laughs> the atmosphere has steadily calmed down by a couple of notches with this special Taoist procession. A deep sense of peace and serenity is what I felt as the melodic chanting rang out. While many rightly associate Taoism with nature, it's also about reverence for ancestor spirits. After all, the bedrock of Taoist values are compassion, moderation, and humility. The Tao, or the Way, is the holy grail to enlightenment in this Eastern philosophy, and I'm just getting clues from this very animated sage on how to live mightily. Lots of people come here for fortune-telling as they seek guidance to become better people in this life. This priest seems to be the star attraction here. He has a jolly nature and an infectious spirit, and everyone was all ears when he spoke. Well, who wouldn't like to hear about their own lives and possible destinies? <laughs> it was surprising to get a reading here as I was just minding my own business. But for a fated moment, the priest wrote some wise words for my spiritual growth. <laughs> My life on a piece of paper, right there. 
Mao Shan seems to be such a destination of genuine worship and spiritual seeking. I don't know if I can align myself to the cosmic forces, but if it's going to improve my well-being, maybe I just have to listen to the priest's good advice. <laughs> the priest told me that I have to talk less, um, but it's a little difficult given my job. So all I have to say is Shenzhen's beauty can be felt through its people, culture, landscape and history, but what can seem to contain this natural wonder of this small city had to be felt and experienced. My name is Greta Georges and this has been Travel Log.